so yeah we did get our lumber cut at home depot i just brought it there and they cut it for us there it all is in every length that we needed and so we're gonna start with the base um the footboard i'm sorry we're starting with the footboard I will recommend you guys do this on a flat surface do not do it on carpet because we have had some shifting in the board um but yeah do it on the flattest surface a hard flat surface but mike is just starting with putting the glue on the flat panels um for the footboard and then he is putting pressure and putting nails um at least one in every board so mike is now after putting the glue on he's hammering um a one and a half inch screw nail i think into he's hammering it down into each of the one by sixes i think that's the one by six the wide boards that we laid flat he is hammering nails into those and he's going to do that on um both Again, he's now doing that to the headboard, putting the glue on there, and then he's gonna flip it over and nail it down into each of the one by sixes. So after finishing doing that, he is now drilling the um he is drilling the pocket holes in there. You guys should have a clamp. You shouldn't do it with your hand. He gave me he made me so nervous doing it with his hand. But um, yeah, you need to drill some pocket holes just to be able to hide some of the screws in the bed. You don't want everything coming straight from the side. You just, um, the pocket holes do much, much better. So now we are going to take the two by four and we are going to glue and nail it down or drill it down to the top of the footer. And you're going to do that to where one side of it is flat and the other part has, um, hangover and um, now you need to make sure that your one by four is even on both sides so that's what Mike is doing now he is making sure that the one by four is hanging off just as much on one side as, as it is on the other side and I think it was three quarters of an inch that was hanging over on one side and again make the top of it flat because that's the part that's gonna be where your mattress is touching and the hangover will be what's showing like the decorative topper for the baseboard and we will do the same thing to the headboard mike is he pre-drilled the holes and now he's just drilling it down once you get your parts cut this is really more like assembly than it is um like making making it it really was quite quick for us we drilled these down because it needs to be a little more sturdy because um, uh, you just don't want it like flipping off. We could have nailed the, them in, but it really needed something stronger. So you can see what it looks like um, underneath. That's what we don't want it to look like on top. So we didn't get any footage of this and I'm really sorry. I don't know why we didn't. But um, those pocket holes that he was drilling into the frame, that's what we used to attach the side into, we just drilled straight through the pocket hole into the legs of the headboard and on the footboard. So you can see what it looks like on the footboard there. The bed came together so beautifully, you guys. It was just so much simpler than what I thought. So hopefully I'm explaining this properly, but from where we drilled the pocket holes, you're gonna take the post for the bed, the legs, and you're gonna drill straight from the pocket holes into the post. Now to add the top trim like we did on the footer, now to add the top trim on the header, he's just screwing them down into the post. He glued the top of it but he drilled it down into the post instead of again hammering because you want a little more stability there. 
So now on to the side rails. You're gonna connect this so that the headboard and the footboard connect to each other. And you can put your mattress and your box spring in there. So measure how high you want your board. I'm gonna try to get Mike to write in the description box of something a little more detailed and to tell you like how many inches he actually um, went up and down and everything like that. But right now he's going to pre-drill holes so that he can just um, screw them through the board. Um, I think he did ours at halfway. So I think it was like six inches so that it could be 10 inches off of the ground. Um, but again, I will have him put all of that in the description box or if you have comments, I'm going too fast. Leave your um, questions in the um, comments down below and we will try to answer them because we did this a little while back and um, I don't remember quite everything. I do have things written down. So we will put stuff in the description box and once, um, once you guys ask your questions, we will answer them for you. But you do want to have a drill. You want to pre-drill your holes because it just makes things so much easier. So to make the footboard high enough so we didn't have to hold them, Mike put a little block of um, wood there until it hit the height in which he wanted it there. That's why those are there. We're not keeping those there to hold them up. We actually got some L brackets to hold them up and it really is actually pretty sturdy. I was nervous that we needed to drill into the wood to make it more sturdy, but he said that we did not need to do that. Um, that the L brackets would hold and we have not had one issue. It's been about three months now that we've had the bed up and using it and we haven't had one tiny issue with that. Again, don't forget to pre-drill before you screw the things in and that is it. That's how it looks. That is the bed all put together, non-stained yet. For the bed slats, again, the, the link will be in the description box, but we also did take a few of the leftover pieces for um, the, um, the post, the side post, the legs of the headboard and footboard, and we put them underneath the slats so that they would hold it. So now Mike is sanding the entire bed lightly right before we stain it. But when you stain, you wanna make sure that you sand just a little bit and you wanna get all of the dust off. Like we use like a little terry cloth to make sure all the dust was off before he started to sand, I mean, before he started to stain it. And there it is stained. That was one coat. It was more than enough. Um, we did not wanna do a second coat. I thought it would make it way too dark. I like the pulling of the wood that's coming through. Um, he stained it, you put it on there, and then you'll wipe it off. And that's um, how we did it. And we topped it off with a coat of poly. And that is it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this helped. If it did not make any sense, please leave your questions down below. We will answer them. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And we will see you guys next time.